Uh, hello, this is a note on optimum sailboat weather routing uh, using the program uh, LuckGrib for uh, it's a Macintosh program or an iOS program. Those are two separate versions. The, um, the routing, the uh, optimum routing is an add-on to the regular uh, program of a grip viewer and weather data. So here's the program and the way we would start and is we would get some data which we'd draw a box and this this program looks like that you would do that and then you would say here uh, new uh, new forecast and then let's say I'm on the internet you could also connect to your sat phone underway or in the ocean or I mean or in back in the desert or something and then let's say I'm going to take the GFS Next, and then you say you download, uh, uh, let's say, wind and pressure like that, something like that, and then so many days and so forth, and then you uh, download that. And then that's the data that I'm getting from the internet. Um, there's a new GRIB model. Okay, that's just announcement, um, and, and so forth. Now, what I've got, so that model came in, and that's that data right there. However, uh, that's a, this is winter time now, and I want to do uh, ocean routing here. So I've actually got. I want to go back and look at some summertime data because we would not sail across the ocean in a winter like this. So I've gone back and got some GFS reanalyzed data, and so this is data from the summer. This is like July, starting out July fourth, and it goes out about ten or fifteen days, sixteen days. And, uh, and we'll use that data, and that's this wind. So that's just as if it were summertime and you did just what I did before, you'd end up with this wind. And then you see here, here's the timeline, and you see how the high, see now the high centered up there, looks like, a, and I randomly picked this date, but this is a more or less random time. The high is not really stable, but it's not terribly unreasonable you know, for this ocean route. So that's the data we want. And now let's do a, just a, a hypothetical example. We switch to the routing mode. This becomes active when you have purchased that, uh, that mode. I'm going to use a Cal 40 as a sample. Actually, later I'll look at Cal 40 and Transpac 52, compare the two from several routes. But for now, let's look at a Cal 40. And we're starting at, uh, let's see, this LA, this area here. LA. So I'm going to right click this and create a start point and then I'm just going to drag that over to where I presumed I wanted to start. Yeah, something something like that. And I'm using the keyboard to kind of like move things around and my mouse and so forth. So that's the starting point of our route. And then where do we want to go? And this is not an actual race or anything, but let's just say I'm going to the Paololo channel. And so I would right click here and say set uh, a destination target create a target point there and so that's where I want to go from there to there and um, that's that and, and there's no there's no route or anything drawn in if we wanted to draw in a route we could draw in a route you know that would look um, uh, well it, you know you could draw and there's one going from there to there and so forth so you could draw those in if you wanted to but we don't need it and then the other thing is I've got the wind that's the wind data now let's look at the let's look at the boat we're going to use here a uh, Cal 40 uh, from LA and uh, let me see here okay let's look at the settings so the first thing is I've got to get the polar diagram and I'm using a polar diagram for a Cal 40 that I've got, ex that I ex exported actually from Expedition. And I'm going to go in and I'm, in the next video, is going to do these same routes using the program Expedition, a popular PC program for uh, navigation uh, analysis and navigation. Uh, LuckGrib is, is uh, more for weather analysis, and now it has this routing option, but it's not a chart navigation program. You don't put charts in it. So here's the polar diagram for this uh, Cal 40 and you see here this this program lets us set a minimum upwind and downwind angle this boat looks like it sails downwind pretty well so I don't see any reason this is like a, the polar diagram means that if the uh, if the wind speed were eight knots and it was from direction 120 then I would ex the wind is the true direction 120 and the wind speed is eight knots I would expect to be going what are these that's two four 
for about four point, you know, four point five. There's five, four point five. So I'd be going, that, and that's a, this is a fundamental part of this whole process. In other words, you have, must have true data here. That's really the way your boat behaves. If this data is not right, you're going to get a wrong answer. Okay, so that's that. We've got that. So there's the boundaries on that. And then you can you can skim through. You can slow the screen down and look at these different options. I'm not doing any of these fancy options here. I'm saying we're always sailing. We're not motoring. Uh, we're avoiding wind greater than 30 knots. That may, tr 30 knots true. And there's no other limits I'm putting on this. And you'll see that there's there's various sorts of ways you can specialize the route selection. Okay, and it says missing a start time. Ah, it reminds me. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I want to start at the beginning of the data here. So I can just right click and say set start from timeline. So now it's reading this time. That's the time it's going to start. I could, I could drag this up to here you know, and say start from there and it would start from there. But right now, that's what I'm starting right at the beginning. That's it. And I think I've got everything. And so I say solve. Okay, so that then computed isochrones, and and I would recommend the well. Uh, first of all, our textbook discusses uh, routing and the various cautions that must be done in using this optimum routing uh, technology. Uh, but then LuckGrib on their site, on the LuckGrib site, has a very nice detailed explanation of this process. It doesn't just say what these various buttons do. There's a discussion of the theory and so on how it works. So this is the optimum way to get a Cal 40 from, uh, from LA to uh, Maui uh, in that particular wind conditions like that. And uh, then you can look at the solution, taped solution details are laid out here. It tells you, you know, the, the true wind angles, what percentage of the time you were on that. It looks like... Um, there was a start time. The four, it took 14 days and 10.5 hours to go this 2,320 miles. Uh, vessel maximum speed is 8.6 and so forth. And then here down the line tells you uh, what, what was the conditions at each time. Now, if we had put in the current, now the currents are, we could put in the currents from the RTOFS model in this case, and in which case, they would have another diagram, another column here that would show us the set and drift of the current and how much it affected the speed made good and so forth. But there's, there's no real significant currents there, although in doing real routing, you should include the currents because when you get down here, the currents can be significant. However, they may not be, the currents could be wrong a little bit. So in those various settings, you can scale the currents. You can say, don't go 100% believing the currents, only believe them like 70% or something. And, or if I think I, I can't sail to my polars, and scale it down and do 90% of your polars and so forth. So then we can look at this and see, you know, you can, there's various ways to study this. And uh, you can, for example, you're tacking. Let's see, we're tacking here. And just one of the things that he's got here is, you see this little yellow thing is showing this. You see what's happening here. This wind is, this wind is backing around, so we're being pushed down, and we eventually have to tack. And these yellow parts are inside the limits you can't go. And somewhere down here, see, it's, it's, it's sailing as close to the wind as it can. And then here, again, it tacks closer to the wind as it can, goes up here, tacks back down, and so forth. So you can study that. This kind of strange behavior here where these isochrones are all weird like that, um, that it means that this, this navigating in this area would be very tricky. If, we, if our job was to go from here up to here, say, look at this, you can have all sorts of, just to get from here to here, look, you go that way or that way. So whenever you get a solution that looks something like that, then you have to be really cautious because it doesn't matter. I mean, it's very sensitive, um, very sensitive and so forth. But this route in the open ocean is pretty clean. Later, we're going to come back and do routing on inland routes around the islands and so forth on inland waters using a high resolution, high resolution models, not this GFS, not this GFS global stuff. Okay, so that's, that is the showing that process. And we showed the data. Let me just now go up here and uh, look at some comparisons just to see. Let's see, not there. I want to go here, 
routes, and I want to go to different weather routes. These are just routes I ran earlier, and let me just turn these. Let me just turn these on and clear what I just did. These are just solutions I did earlier. This one down here is the one we just did, and this is this is just one way to look at this. And you see, here is a here is a Cal 40 coming. This all these boats started in the same wind condition, same time. And this is a blue line, in both cases is a Cal 40. The red line is a Transpac 52. And let me go back, did I show that? Let me go back. Uh, uh, well, they, well, they're t completely different uh, polar, di way different polar diagrams. Um, but now if we, uh, but I just wanted to just show how, depending on your boat and where you're starting from and so forth, the routes are rather different. And then we can just go through time like this and see the difference in those routes and so forth. And then we'll keep this perspective in mind here. I'll get another picture of this a different way. And uh, then we'll compare this computation with other, other programs. And, and you'll see that the, the, the two very popular programs, Luck, uh, Expedition, Luck Grib, give us pretty much essentially the same results. Uh, although they have different ways, different ways to analyze the results and the different ways that you can fine tune what you're doing. Each program has their own, uh, their own features for things they can add and how they do it. But we'll just, this is just an introduction. It takes, you have to study these in some detail to, to get the most out of it. But then once you have a route picked out, you can actually then export it to GPX. And like if you're using this program in a lab, in a PC, and excuse, me in a in an iPhone or you could do it in an iPhone or do it in a tablet iPad then you can just export that export that as a GPX and import it to the ship's navigation system and then follow that route that way but in reality the way people do this that it really in fact you have to do it that way frankly you can't just not the way people do it you have to do it that way you can't just run this route when you're sitting there at the dock and then drive drive to Hawaii that way you have to you get new weather every every six hours you get new weather every six hours and in principle you really should run this model update the data and run this model every six hours and watch and watch how your routes go all right, that's the introduction that's using LuckGrib.